Following the death of Jason Todd, the second Robin, the Batman stories continually surprised the audience with how they were presented, the art, just what was going on in the times, in the country, in the world, and how Batman was just presented to the audience in a grown-up fashion, but still where it was still relatable for audiences of a younger age. He was definitely a great hero to follow. If you were a younger age, 10, 11, 12, a teenager, whatever, he was still there for you. And it was a fantastic comic to read. It never talked down to you. And that's why, you know, these stories are still relatable and still these are key issues. Um, Year three brought back Dick Grayson into the story to sp- speak with Batman about him, you know, how he was maybe getting a little too brutal uh, following the death of Jason. And then it went back and kind of put a year one spin on the first Robin Dick Grayson story. And then A Lonely Place of Dying introduced Tim Drake who would eventually go on to be the new Robin. We had a KG Beast story where Batman went to Russia, and that was a good two- to three-issue storyline, which is still exceptional. There were all, with Jim Apparel drawing it, and it was still, you know, still lives on to be excellent, and KG Beast being introduced for the first time as far as I know I may have to go back and check uh, you know the history of that character it had a penguin it was one of those deals where it was the penguin in two issues of Batman and then one issue of detective so but you know most likely if you were a Batman fan at the time and and could afford it with your pocket money then you could you were probably getting Batman and detective and then Shadow of the Bat and possibly Legends of the Dark Knight, if you could get it. I always loved the Shadow of the Bat line when it started in 92 um, because Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle were behind it originally. Legends of the Dark Knight, I always thought, was just a little more expensive the way I remember it. And I also just never liked the stories as much. I don't know if it just wasn't for me or if it was who was leading the art direction, who was writing it, I don't know. And to this day, I don't really have too many of those issues in my collection. Dark Knight, Dark City, featuring the Riddler, still one, and that's right there is one of my favorite covers ever. Uh, But it's still one of the best Riddler stories, I think. Uh, And after that, you actually see, you don't see the Riddler again until nightfall. And he's still suffering from... uh, the effects it had on his mind. Scarecrow comes along in this issue. So if you were a Batman fan in this time and you're collecting right back to back, you have a Penguin story, Joker, Scarecrow, or Penguin, Joker, Riddler, Scarecrow, right? So that's a great year of of villains. Look at this cover right here, Norm Brayfogle. Oh my gosh. I mean, these are just fantastic stories. Fantastic covers. Here's Harold is introduced, which, as many of you may know, he w- he became a resident of the Bat Cave and stayed with them. And then here's a fantastic issue that goes back to uh, Batman's introduction as a kid to Zorro and that tragic night. And then it this one has a bit of a tragic ending. So this is a great issue. This is just a great era for Batman with great artists and great storytellers.